And then, you know, the, the things that y'all did as, as kids are the things that helped the springs, you know, jumping jacks, you know, plyometrics, you know, any type of like burpees, anything that works. I do a lot of single leg running, like at the end, end of almost every run, I'll, you know, for a couple hundred meters, just one leg, hop, 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 other leg, hop, 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 a lot of skips, you know, they're on the website, you know, the old track skips. So I still do all these track drills, A skips, B skips, D skips, sprinting really helps your springs. You know, not sprinting till you feel like you want to, like, puke. It's like little 40 meters. I'll finish, like, this morning, you know, on beautiful grass and my bare feet, you know, did, like, eight fifty meters. And by, like, that eighth one, your strides, like, opened up. And that's, like, dynamic stretching. So that's, like, you know, hitting a lot of buttons, These doing these short sprints. You know, it gets your coordination, opens your hips, a little bit of strength training, works on your spring. You know, we've got some videos in there called the uh, Wake Up Your Springs, um, lunge matrixes things like that but if your your foot has to be in a good position so if your big toe is bent in and your foot's not functioning like a spring because it's all messed up so you got to look at the foot too so we'll always assess people's feet if their feet are good get their feet in a good position then progressively you know stair hops there's all kinds of you know little you could make on your kitchen floor you could make a little square you know, just kind of hop, you know, from like you got four little boxes there, you know, almost like hopscotch. You would just mm-hmm. try it. It's really hard, you know, and I'm not talking about, you know, land stick, land stick, you know, pop, 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 you know, like really quick. Things like that. Okay. And, you know, start with two legs and then move to one leg because running is a series of single leg hops. Yeah, we've been jump roping quite a bit with my jump kids rope, outside, yeah. and and just hearing you say it as well in the book, I was like just continuing that as well. And if you're in a hotel, I mean, none of this stuff takes a gym, which is beautiful. Yeah. You know, I travel with a jump rope. You know, throw it in my bag, and you know, you never know what you know, little resistance band. Just bring these things with you. You know, the foot has 26 bones, 33 joints, 100 muscle tendon insertions, and it's you know, it's a neurologic organ basically. There's 200,000 nerve endings you know, that send messages locally and centrally to control all your movement. So, so if your foot can heal the, you know, feel the ground, you know, you've got th- like as an adult, not a kid, but you have three feet of shocks on your body, which are kind of mitigated by what the foot's telling three, you know, going up to, you know, you've got your plantar fascia, you've got your ankle, you've got your knee, you've got your hip, all this functions as a big shock absorber, you know, and it's all activated by the foot. And that works beautifully. You know, I just came back now. I went out for about an hour and 20 minute barefoot run on the roads and get my feet. Kind of went really slow because my feet haven't, they're kind of like tenderfoot because it's spring. (laughs) You know, you're in shoes all winter because it's cold, right? And and then you, but I love barefoot because you you come back from a barefoot run and it's crazy. You, I've never not felt like a million bucks coming back from a barefoot run because everything kind of resets itself, you know, and your body will tell you how fast or slow you should go. You know, because if something's uncomfortable, your body just adjusts and slows down. But yeah, so if when, as soon as you brace that foot or make some adaption, say you brace something or put an arch support in or raise the heel, you make an adaption in one part of the way the foot interfaces with the ground, the body's going to compensate and make an adaptation somewhere else that's really against the human biology. But yeah, so I think you got to unwind it and kind of fix the biology. So that's what we try to do in our stores, try to, you know, really the human posture you know when you're when you're in a heel your posture the way your back hips knees are aligned you know then you're looking at a screen and texting i'm at a stand-up desk now and you know so everyone same here yeah yeah i can kind of tell but everyone's in these kind of zoo human you know positions homo domesticus so then they want to go run for 30 minutes you know but there was just a study last week showing the the amount of time humans are sitting is increasing so I think that's what I write about in the book. I mean, if you're sitting 12 hours a day and you think that you can do a couple foam rolling exercises and go run 30 minutes and you're going to do that wonderfully well without getting hurt, I, th- I think it's the rest of the day, you know, how you just be a, a more of an ancestral human, nothing weird or paleo about it. Just, you know, stand up, move more, lift heavy things, you know, do lunge. I mean, just do things to open your hip if you got. It. I mean, just walk. You know, calisthenics, plyometrics, skips, jumps, all the things that we did as kids on the playground. Just recreate that into your day. 